slaves could see the paradox. Thomas Jefferson, still in his early 30s, spoke of slavery as a moral evil, yet he was a prominent member of the Virginia slaveholding class. Now he was at work on a document about equality and liberty. We hold these truths to be self-evident. If I were Jupiter looking at my childhood friend Thomas Jefferson, knowing the world we both grew up in, I wouldn't be surprised by the contradictions that emerge in his thinking. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In some ways, you know, Thomas Jefferson is so like America itself. Thomas Jefferson expresses opinions in the Declaration of Independence that are wonderful examples of fairness, of a belief in human dignity and human freedom. Yet Thomas Jefferson is so contradictory because the man who writes the Declaration of Independence is the man that holds at one point almost 250 slaves or more. The country that says to the world, we bring ourselves into existence on the principle of human freedom is the country that is in many ways founded on the principle of human slavery, supported by that principle. That pretty substantial contradiction. April, 1775, open warfare broke out. Black people began choosing sides. In the North, some 5,000 black men joined and mixed in all black regiments to fight on the side of the Patriots. Some fought as Minutemen in the earliest battles of the war. Black soldiers were badly needed because some white colonists were reluctant to serve. Initially, General Washington resisted arming black men. For white Americans everywhere, the image of a black soldier toting a gun evokes a totally disordered society, the complete disordering of the old society. Washington relented when he heard what was happening further south. Word was spreading that the British were going to offer freedom to slaves who joined their side. In November 1775, Lord Dunmore, the royal governor of Virginia, issued a proclamation offering freedom to enslaved people who fled to the British, who joined his Ethiopian corps. It has a tremendous effect, and word spreads to other colonies. It was the rumor of Lord Dunmore's proclamation that probably inspired Titus to run away. After a stint in Dunmore's Ethiopian regiment, Titus returned to the Monmouth, New Jersey countryside. This time, he was leading a guerrilla band of black and white raiders fighting for the British. Only now, he was known as Colonel Ty. Colonel Ty and his band knew the landscape and the farmers in the region. They raided property and carried off cattle and clothing to deliver to British troops. They terrorized their former owners and kidnapped key patriot farmers. Most importantly, they liberated their enslaved families and friends. New York was the cockpit of the revolution. Colonel Tide was acting on a local level, but his actions had continental importance. During a battle in September 1780, Colonel Tide took a bullet in his wrist. Within days, he died. Only 26 years old, he had fought in the revolution for five years. <laughs> 